In this video, we're going to discuss the topic of natural selection, and this is for IV section 5.2. And in the previous video, we looked at the topic of evolution and some evidence for evolution. And in this video, we're going to look at the primary driving force, or what actually causes biological evolution to happen, and that is natural selection. And so to begin, we'll have a quick review here. Uh, biological evolution is simply the cumulative change in the allele frequencies of heritable characteristics of a population. So you have a population and for whatever reason maybe there's some sort of environmental change or some of those individuals move to a different area where some, there's some different environmental factors and biological evolution is simply the change in the frequencies of different alleles and alleles being different forms or types of traits and it's uh, evolution is the change of those traits within a population. And this is all possible and happens because of descent with modification. The idea that uh, sexually reproducing organisms reproduce and have offspring that are very similar but have slight variations or differences, modifications, because of mixing up of genes and alleles during sexual reproduction, mutations, etc. This occurs specifically in a population. Biological evolution, natural selection, is not acting on an individual. Biological evolution cannot happen for an individual, it happens in a population. And generally this is a change that's going to happen over a very slow period of time. It's a very gradual change. All of this is dependent or results on different environmental selection pressures. So it's, it's entirely dependent on, on what gives individuals the best chance to survive in their particular environment. And the environment is what is providing those selection, uh, selective pressures. There's some different conditions that are necessary for change that we're going to look at in this video. And the first is variation. Members of a species obviously are going to show variation if they're sexually reproducing. If you have siblings or if you have cousins, you probably have some similarities in terms of how you look, uh, your physical appearance, maybe some of the behavioral characteristics that you have. Each individual within a species, within a population, is going to be slightly different because of their different DNAs. Additionally, there's generally going to be an overproduction of offspring. For animal species and for plants and for different species, there's generally going to be more offspring produced than, can, than, than the environment can support. And what this leads to is competition. Some individuals are going to be able to compete or have a better chance of survival than other individuals. If there's some sort of change in the environmental conditions or if there's some selective pressure, this then, because of that competition, allows some individuals to have a better chance of survival than others. And so what we're going to do here is look at uh, kind of how these factors all come into play. Overproduction of offspring, variation of, within, of individuals within the population, individuals that have traits that give them a, a higher chance of being able to survive and reproduce and have offspring who reproduce, is going to lead to natural selection as well as the unequal ability of individuals, all individuals, to be able to survive and reproduce. And so what this is going to lead to is this part, part right here, accumulation of favorable traits in a population. And that's what we're seeing happen with natural selection, is the accumulation of favorable traits in a population. Natural selection is the process that's selecting those individuals that have those favorable traits. And you could call that, or you could say that those individuals have a higher level of fitness. A lot of times people will say that they are stronger or the stronger individual in the population because they're able to survive. Well, sometimes, yes, that's the case. It can be an actual physical uh, trait or characteristic that the, the being physically stronger helps them to survive. But that's not always necessarily the case for all species in different environments. A better or more accurate way to describe an individual that's able to survive in this environment through natural selection is an individual that has a higher level of fitness. And fitness is the ability to survive, reproduce, and have reproducing offspring. And so to look at this a little bit further, we first need to look at where does variation come from. And an honest, quick, easy answer is sexual reproduction. Organisms that reproduce sexually are going to have offspring that are similar but slightly different. And through sexual reproduction and through crossing over and, and genetic recombination, there is a mixing of alleles and DNA in order to provide this variation. An additional cause of variation is uh, occasionally occurs through mutations. A lot of mutations have actually no effect on the ex 
expression of traits and the actual genes that cause different traits. But sometimes, on some situations, those mutations can actually happen in genes that do cause traits. And also, a good deal of this uh, variation is coming through meiosis. This is what's causing uh, genetic variation, specifically with crossing over. And in crossing over, what is happening is homologous chromosomes are actually exchanging a small portion of the arm on one of the chromosomes. And so what that does is it's not a mutation, but it's just mixing up those genes, those, those alleles. It's a, it's a way to mix up the genes even further to create more genetic variation. Genetic recombination is a second way that this can happen. And this is simply looking at the fact that how the chromosomes separate during meiosis is random. And so in this example, we're looking at just a very simple uh, two different chromosomes, two different, two different lengths here. Um, organism in humans, we have 23 chromosome pairs. And so the way that these can separate to form sex cells, sperm and egg, is going to be different every time. There's, there's a huge number, millions of different combinations of how those uh, chromosomes can separate out into the uh, sex cells of sperm and egg. And last but not least is simply random fertilization. Males produce millions of sperm cells over the course of their lifetime. Females have thousands of eggs. Which sperm cell and which egg cell that actually become, combine to become an offspring is very random. And so again, that's just increasing the variation and the diversity in the offspring that are produced. So this leads to the second question of what happens when there are too many offspring or too many babies produced? And say we have a population of rabbits, and they reproduce, uh, a pair of rabbits, and they reproduce, and they have babies, and they have babies, and babies, and babies, and babies. They have lots and lots of offspring. What does this lead to? Well, when there are too many offspring or too many babies, um, it's going to lead to competition. And this all is made possible if there's lots of resources available. And resources doesn't just have to mean food. It could also include space or mates or other nutrients that are needed by the, uh, the organism to be able to survive. Uh, sunlight, for example, in plants. What we see happen is that population is going to increase because there's lots of resources available. And eventually that population is going to reach its carrying capacity, which is the maximum amount of individuals that can survive in that environment given the resources available. But the population doesn't necessarily realize this. Animals and plants aren't going to realize this. Humans don't even realize this in some cases. And so the population is going to continue to increase. But now there's too many individuals. And this leads to competition. And because there's variation within, within those individuals that are in the, the population, some are going to be able to outcompete others. Some have a higher level of fitness, meaning that they're able to survive and reproduce and have reproducing offspring. And so what we see happen here is the less fit individuals perish, they're not going to be able to survive. And if you can't survive long enough to be able to reproduce, your genes, your traits are not going to be passed on to the next generation. Those individuals that do survive are going to be able to reproduce and pass on their fit genes to the next generation. However, there's going to be variation within that generation as well. And so over time, we'll see the more fit traits or types of alleles continue within that population, leading to a favorable accumulation of heritable characteristics in the population. So we can take a look at this, and this image is taken from uh, UC Berkeley's excellent evolution site. Let's say that we have a population of birds, and they like to eat beetles, and there's variation within that population of the beetles in terms of their color. Beetles that uh, stand out or are favored by the birds are going to be consumed more often. And so if there's a lot of individuals in that population and there's some variation uh, through competition and, and inheritance, uh, and time that's eventually going to lead to natural selection. So what we see happen here is let's say that the birds prefer the green beetles. So they eat the green beetles. That means that those green beetles that are eaten are not able to pass on their genes to the next, to the next generation. And so we see more and more brown beetles in that population until we get to eventually there being all brown beetles. This is the process of natural selection. And what, what is actually happening here is the allele frequencies, or the alleles for brown color in the beetles, are becoming more and more common. And so we could say that biological evolution has happened in this case because the allele frequencies are changing. 
As another example, this actually can lead to adaptations, and this can be a structural, behavioral, or a physiological, which would be some sort of internal process that helps a species to survive in its environment. Natural selection is leading to different adaptations that help organisms in order to be able to survive in their environment. And this is at a species level, not an individual's level. Um, it's, uh, an adaptation is not being developed in an individual's lifetime. They are developing within the species over a long period of time. Let's look at a couple of examples now uh, of biological evolution. And the first is the stickleback fish uh, in Lobberg Lake in Alaska. And what happened with this fish species between 1957 and 2006, the, the species changed so that it had full b body armor, if you will, um, from having a full body armor to a low armored in 13 different generations. And this was caused because of an environmental change. And what, what was present in this lake uh, were other fish species, and some of these other fish species would eat the stickleback fish, and so the, the fish had body armor to help protect itself. Humans came in and removed the predator fish, and so over a number of generations, quite a few generations in fact, the individuals that didn't have body armor, that had less body armor, had a higher chance of surviving. And the reason for that was actually that having body armor in the young or the fry, the fish fry, actually allowed them to be caught or captured by some um, different other organisms living in the, in the water, and so they would be eaten and they wouldn't be able to survive. So over a number of generations, we're actually able to see this in collecting samples, the armor, the body armor, so the alleles that caused that body armor, changed within the population so that the fish did not have a full body armor. Another great example is found in bacteria. And we use antibiotics as a way to kill bacteria. And over time, and more recently, this has become a big cause for concern, and will be in the future, moving forward for humans and for livestock, is more and more bacteria are becoming resistant to antibiotics. And this image here, also from UC Berkeley, has a great example and, and really shows how that happens. Um, say we have a population of bacteria, and we introduce some antibiotics to, to get rid of that bacteria, and it kills off pretty much everything. So you can see in number two here, pretty much everything is dead, except for one normal bacteria, one resistant bacteria, everything else is dead. Well, those that survive reproduce, and so in the next generation, after those bacteria reproduce, we have a couple here that are normal bacteria, but we have a whole bunch of resistant bacteria because they are resistant to that antibiotic. Well, more antibiotics applied, and then all of the normal bacteria is removed, but now only the resistant bacteria still remain. That population of bacteria has changed through natural selection, and the selection pressure in this, in this case is the presence of those antibiotics. It's causing that bacteria species to change. A final example that we have is found in the Galapagos Islands, and this involves two researchers, Peter and Rosemary Grant, a married couple, and they've been going to the Galapagos Islands uh, for quite a few years, over 30 years, and measuring the beak size of different finches. And in 1977, there was a major drought on Daphne Major, one of the islands in the Galapagos ar archipelago, that caused a shortage of small seeds. And so what this left was larger, um, larger seeds for birds to eat, and only birds that had larger beaks were actually able to crack the, the seeds and be able to get the, the nuts and be able to get nourishment in, it in order to be able to survive. And so what this resulted in over time, because of this environmental change, birds that had smaller beaks that weren't able to eat the larger seeds died because they couldn't get enough food, and so they weren't able to pass on their DNA, their traits, their genes. They were less fit in this environment. Birds that had larger beaks were able to get enough food to be able to survive and reproduce and pass on their genes. And so between just, just a couple of years, the average bird beak size changed. You can see in the graph here, the average was about nine and a half. And then after just a couple years, changed to 10. Now they, that may not seem like a major change, but this is natural selection causing this population to change. And this is representing biological evolution because the allele frequencies in this case, beak size have changed. It's another example of natural selection. There are many more that we have observed in nature through collection of data and evidence, and we'll look at some more in class. That is our discussion of natural selection.